Bobby Beverts with Paul McCartney in London. If you run the show backwards, it will not say Paul's dead, Paul's dead, Paul's <laughs> dead. No, that's not true. Another thing that's not true is his wife, Linda Eastman McCartney. She's not the heir to the Eastman fortune. But people always say that. People have been saying that for years. But we were on holiday. We were watching VH1, actually. And the jock came on. He played Good Night Tonight. And then he came on. He said, uh, there you go. There's Linda Eastman McCartney. And you know she's the heir to the Eastman Coda. It's just the name. Mm. She's not. She's nothing to do with that. In fact, it's just as well she kind of owns up about it too, because we were in a uh, disco in L.A. quite a few years ago, and this guy comes up. He says, "Are you uh, heir to the Eastman fortune?" She said, "No, no. She's like a mistake." They always yeah. say. He said, "Good." He said, "Cause I am." <gasps> oh! <laughs> so I'm glad you said that. Oh, so that's you know. <laughs> Well, that could have been a bit of a sticky wicket. I speak in British. Hey, folks, you're speaking to Paul McCartney. Caller, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, my name is uh, Mitch Canoyer. I'm from Coventry, Rhode Island. How are you? What's your question? Hi, Mitch. Hi, Paul. I just want to say, first thing off, uh, Paul, you're one of the greatest writers and uh, singers of music. Uh, you're legendary in this, in this time. You'll turn my head with your oh, compliments. Oh, you are. You are. Uh, my question is, um, not with John being deceased the last nine years, uh, and just before he was cut down and is coming back, uh, what do you think he'd be up to now if he had been alive? Do you think he'd be up to a whirlwind tour, or do you think he'd be back into a reclusive state? Oh, no, he'd be doing something great. I don't know what, but he'd be doing something great. He'd, he'd still be out there uh, performing and whatnot then? Oh, yeah, sure, okay. you know. He'd, he'd be doing what he felt like, you know. If uh, if out, being out performing was what he felt, felt like, he'd be doing it great, I think, you know, or, or if recording was what he was into. He's a, you know, as I'm sure you agree, like he's a major, mega talent, old John there. And uh, I think if that hadn't happened, I'm sure he would have just carried on, you know, getting better and better, really. Yeah. He might have, you know, he might have done, he might have become a novelist. That was something he wanted to do. Novel. Yeah, uh -huh. he, he, he had this sort of secret uh, passion to, like, write a great novel. And I've seen some of his writing since, <clears throat> since then, and I knew some of his earlier stuff. And he really might have... He might have done that. You know, that's something he might have been able to get together. I think he could have done that. Thank okay. you. Thank you for calling, all right? Okay. Uh, speaking of writing, as, as, I, as <coughs> I told you earlier, uh, the songs that you and John wrote, a lot of times I had teachers who typed them up and mimeographed yeah. them, and, and we had to study them in poetry classes yeah. in high school. Amazing. What about you with writing? How many offers do you get to write your story? I like a story. I, occasionally they, they uh, offer me. But I must say... I never really used to want to do it. You know, I used to think, well, you don't want to write your memoirs till you're kind of really sort of old and you've lived all of your life. Then you settle down, you retire or something. <coughs> I'll tell you the truth, though. The thing is, after like about 30 years, obviously your memory on certain facts mm -hmm. starts to go. 30 years is a heck of a long time for like a computer to hold yeah, yeah, facts, yeah. you know. And um, is there also a case of... Maybe you start to believe the press that was written about yeah, you. Well, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is it. This is what happens. Well, I, I was uh, talking to a very good friend of mine, Neil uh, Aspinall, um, who was like our roadie through all yeah. the Beatles times and then later on uh, managed Apple. And uh, we were talking about an incident, and we both remembered the same incident exactly, but he had it in Piccadilly, and I had it in Savile Row, which was ah. where the Beatles building used to be. And it got worried me enough to make me think, wait a minute, I wonder who's right. Just the background change, not the incident. So I just thought, well, maybe it is time to kind of uh, think of writing something, just to set the record straight, just to that make sure. Good. You think if you ha if you write it, you have control if somebody else does it, like what yeah. Mr. Goldman did about <clears throat> John. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's something else again, you know. Yeah. That's, I mean, the, the, the thing about those books for me is I kind of flick through them just to see, if, uh, see what the first story I read is about. First th thing I read in that was that John came around to my house and he was annoyed at me for something. So he, he, he kicked a hole in a painting that he'd done for me. Yeah. Well, number one, he never did a painting for me, and certainly never kicked a hole in the painting that he never did for me. So right from there on, I think, well, this book is flawed, you know? No point in me reading it, really. Flawed, that's a kind word for it. Well, you know, I mean, you know. Let's, Let's take another caller here. <coughs> caller, what's your name? Where are you from? You uh -huh. have the... Hi, you're on. You're okay, on with Paul McCartney. Rob Black. Rob Black? 
Bob Black. I'm from I'm, Ligonier, Pennsylvania. I'm black, too. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, it's the each one. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Hello, Paul. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Uh, yeah. you, are, you are my idol. Let me say that. You've been my idol since I was about five. I, ver I work hard, though. I'm not idle. <laughs> Just a whoa, joke, Bob. Whoa, Just whoa. another little bit of whoa, biting wit. A little bit of biting wit there. <laughs> okay, uh, you, my question? Yeah. Okay, um, I want to know what's the best year of your life been? What's been the best it's, year of your life? Uh, it's, it's really too hard, man. I, uh, there's not been any one best year. But I can tell you, like, a few things that have been great. But, I mean, I'll, I'll miss out so many. Uh, meeting the Queen for the first time, the Queen of England, that was like, it was a big time, a big sort of year in, in the Beatles' uh, success. And that kind of put the icing on the cake, so that was, that was great. Meeting Linda uh, mm. was better for me. Um, but I couldn't exactly give you, and having the kids is magic. That's pure magic. I don't know if you've, uh, you know, got kids or are thinking about but that is something else. Because the trouble is, of course, you can't tell anyone until they've had kids. Um, you talk about it, say, oh, yeah, I was there at the birth. Oh, it was like magic, you know. But um, have, have those would be three things that have been fairly amazing in my life, but I couldn't just get you one year. Hmm. Do you this have kids? This is my most amazing one. Huh? This is my most amazing time. Oh, great. Sure. Have you got any kids? No, no I've got a five-year-old brother. <laughs> well, all right. That's, that's close enough. That's almost the same kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for taking time to call. Oh, thank you very much. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Did you, did you ever think that one day, I, the, I was watching the complete Beatles, and you thought, mm. well, the group would go on for like four, maybe ten years. If we were lucky, yeah. If you were lucky. Did you That's think right. that you'd be at, at this point in your life? What, you have love all over the globe from your fans. You know, and that yeah, not it's, everyone it's can say that. It's astounding, isn't it? Yeah. And, no, I mean, I, I certainly didn't think we'd, uh, the Beatles would go on as long as they did. Mm -hmm. we, we thought that would be quite sort of... Uh, short-lived really because most people were at that time most most of the rock and roll acts kind of came and went quickly um now you know i just feel very lucky that's that's my overriding feeling because you know i'm i'm a kid from a housing estate in liverpool yeah. whose mother was like a midwife father was like a salesman you know so uh, they gave me a really great straight kind of upbringing and it was like a platform to launch off from yeah. With, I think, fairly good values, you know, I mean, I don't want to kind of boast, but they did tell you what was right, what was wrong, and you, you got a kind of idea of how not to blow it heavily. Uh, personally, you blew it, I, th I think that's added add you know to your longevity. I really do. You know, and so, I mean, hopefully then we just kind of went off and had the Beatles thing, which I always say to people, you know, it was for good. Anyone mm. who sort of detracts from it, you say, you that power, we could have used that wrongly, you know. Don't, don't forget that fact. You know, we, you think about it, what did the Beatles use it for? It was like, give peace a chance. Well, that wasn't the Beatles, but it's the same thing. All you need is love. Yeah. It was always a very positive force, you know, I think. And we do, too. <laughs> so, so let's take a break and come back. And more people will be able to call Paul after a short break here on VH1. It's a time of war. Though I know I mustn't crumble, it's a time. 